For over the past 20 years, the Honda Pilot has been one of the most popular three-row family crossovers here in America. Now, unfortunately, Honda's popularity in this segment started to dwindle, especially about three years ago when Hyundai and Kia introduced the very popular Palisade and Telluride twins. Now, for 2023, Honda is hoping to recapture some of that magic with an all-new fourth generation of the Pilot. As you can see, it's been fully redesigned with a boxier look, with an all-new interior, with an all-new V6 engine, and even though we've already had a chance to drive this vehicle out in Arizona during the first drive, as you can see this week, Honda has loaned me this 2023 Pilot Trail Sport, the most off-road capable version of the Pilot ever with an extra inch of ground clearance and factory all-terrain tires. So this week, we're actually going to live with the Pilot. We're gonna put it through our usual battery of tests. And at the end of this video, we're gonna find out has Honda made enough changes to the all new Pilot to make this vehicle the most desirable three-row family crossover again? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start going over the exterior styling changes for this all new generation, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering the new Pilot. Now, just like the prior generation, Honda makes it simple. There is just one engine choice, a naturally aspirated V6, which is technically an all new engine this year. Now, just like the outgoing Pilot, this new V6 has a new block and a new head and new internals. It still measures in at 3.5 liters. However, it is now a double overhead cam versus a single overhead cam. It also loses the signature VTEC uh, system. Instead, it just has variable timing control but it also does have direct injection and makes 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. That is the same torque as the old V6, but about five more horsepower versus the prior generation. It all goes out through a 10-speed automatic transmission. That is a Honda-designed automatic transmission. It replaces the old ZF nine-speed auto that you found in the prior generation. Fuel economy is rated to get uh, in this trim here at 18 in the city, 23 on the highway. It is lower versus the other trims because of the all-terrain tires. You can get like 1924, I believe, or 1925 on the Elite trims, for example. Uh, and you can get this vehicle with either front wheel drive or the company's latest version of their IVTM4, their variable torque management all wheel drive system. Uh, with this model here, it comes standard with all wheel drive because it's the Trail Sport. The Elite as well comes standard with all wheel drive. It is optional, like a $2,100 upcharge on the other trim levels. Now, this model here also has what Honda calls their, tra their Trail Torque Logic. It's in the automatic transmission. It's a software programming along with several several different driving modes. Uh, Honda doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but we will put it through our usual test here. Uh, now that we have it back home and see what we get out in the real world, uh, towing capacity stands at 5,000 pounds with all wheel drive. This model here comes standard with a tow hitch at the back. And as this car sits, it weighs in at just under 4,700 pounds. So it is slightly heavier versus the prior generation. But close up the hood and let's go ahead and talk about the new masculine, boxier, truck-like styling of the all-new fourth generation Pilot. Now, the pre previous generation definitely looked a little bit too much like a minivan for me. I wasn't the biggest fan of the design. Honda instead goes back to the second-gen Pilot for this new version, but also kind of merges it with some of the curvier aspects of the third generation. I think for the most part, it is an attractive looking SUV. You can see the Trail Sport has its own unique front fascia with the Trail Sport badge in the grille. You can see it's a gloss black grille, fairly large grille with a large Honda emblem here. This is, the, this is also the trim that comes standard with the front camera, a 360 camera, which you have to also get or uh, go with the Elite trim to get. Uh, full LED headlights are gonna be standard on every Pilot. You can see it's got LED daytime running lights, reflector style, LED low and high beams. And then down here, you can see the Trail Sport also includes LED fog lights along with some functional air intakes, uh, uh, some more air intakes at the front. But overall, in this Sonic Great Pearl, which is a $500 upcharge, it certainly is a much more attractive looking SUV. Is it better looking versus the Palisade, the CX-90 and the Telluride? That's really up to you. Styling is always subjective, but I think this is definitely one of the more attractive options. Um, and I like how Honda decided to go with a boxier look. Now, being built on a new platform, this vehicle is larger versus the prior generation. Its wheelbase has been stretched by nearly three inches to 113.8 inches long. The overall length, however, has been stretched by around uh, 3.7 inches. So this is the biggest SUV that Honda has ever given us at an overall length of just over 200 inches on the Trail Sport model. This is actually about a foot longer versus the first generation Pilot. So again, this model here has gotten much larger. You can see the wheels 
These wheels are unique to the Trail Sport. It's an 18 inch shark gray finished wheel with like an off or an, uh, with a lip that's kind of behind the actual tire. This is to help, to help prevent curb rash and damage. Uh, you can see you have a 30.5 inch all-terrain continental tire. It's measuring a 265-60 R18. Uh, this model here also gets uh, a unique suspension tune. The suspension has been lifted by about an inch with a different tuned shock. And you also have actual factory skid plates underneath here for the engine, for the transmission, for the fuel tank, of course. That is uh, one of the class exclusive features that you're gonna get on the Trail Sport. And then the brakes have also been upgraded. These are 13.8 inch rotors. They're an inch and a half larger versus the prior generation. So uh, this vehicle should have improved braking performance. You can see the Trail Sport also includes these unpainted wheel arches, you get black painted side mirrors, uh, black painted door handles, then you also have a traditional roof rail system along with a panoramic sunroof, which comes standard on this trim and up. Uh, but overall, let me know what you guys think of the overall design. I definitely think from this angle here, it gives you a much more masculine look that looks less like a minivan. Now at 8.3 inches of ground clearance, like I said, it has an inch more than the prior than the regular trims. It definitely is gonna give you some better off-road capability. It's not the most in the segment. I believe the Explorer Tim line and the Subaru Ascent still have more ground clearance than this vehicle. But you can see looking at the rear, I definitely like the rear styling of this vehicle more than the front. You can see it spells out Pilot pretty boldly at the back. You have some black badging here for the Trail Sport on the all-wheel drive badge. You can see the rear taillights have a LED incandescent combination design. You can see the turn signal is incandescent. However, I believe the brake lights and the taillight assembly themselves are actually a full LED, which is uh, nice. You can see full 360 camera, like I mentioned, the Trail Sport comes standard with a tow hitch with uh, integrated recovery points that are built into the tow hitch at the back. And there's also one at the front built into the skid, the skid plate. And then this model here has a programmable power lift gate, uh, which if you guys want the hands-free power lift gate, you'll have to go for a touring or elite trim, but you can see with that increase in size, you do get more cargo capacity, just under 19 cubic feet with the third row seat up. And then underneath here, you can see there's an additional three cubic feet of storage. Now. I believe because the Trail Sport comes standard with a full-size matching spare, so underneath here, you're gonna find a full-size matching spare, and this is the only trim to get that. It does um, shrink this capacity, I believe, a little bit more versus the other trims, because in other trims, you actually have enough underfloor storage here to pull out the middle seat and then store it underneath the floor here, the middle seat for the second row. However, this model here comes standard with uh, captain's chairs, as you can see. If you wanna fold down the third row, you kind of do that by pulling on this latch and then that will fold down the headrest. Fold that down, it expands it to just under 49 cubic feet of space. And then if you fold down the second row again, you'll get a maximum of 87 cubic feet of storage space. That's among the best in the segment. And because of the Pilot's new boxier shape, you definitely have a much more usable cargo area. So let's go ahead and talk about the interior of the all new 2023 Pilot. Before we get inside, however, I wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current key that Honda currently uses. It's got intelligent access key with uh, your usual buttons, lock, unlock, remote start, power lift gate, and then of course a panic feature. If you guys have access to the your smartphone and the Honda app, you should also be able to access this vehicle through your smartphone there as well. Now you can see traditional door handles, black painted. This little area here is where you touch to lock the vehicle. It also has Honda's walk away auto lock feature. It also has power folding mirrors. If you touch the back of the door handle, that's going to unlock the door for you. Now, if you guys don't want a black interior, you're not going to like the Trail Sport because this is the only interior color that Honda offers with the Trail Sport. It's got a synthetic faux leather, which is black with some orange contrasting stitching, uh, some actual badging there and the head restraint, uh, which looks good, the black on the orange. But again, I wish Honda would offer more interior color options. If you guys want a lighter color or a brown color, you can step it up to the Elite trim, but the Trail Sport only comes with a black interior, although it does look good with the Sonic Gray. You can see the door panel looks a little bit too stark for me. I would have liked to see a little more color. There is a little bit of splash of color there with the orange on the stitching here for the armrest pad. This upper door panel is soft touch plastic, a lot of piano black, which is gonna get covered in fingerprints. Um, this is a nice padded area here. You have two person memory seats along with a 12 way, or I'm sorry, a 10 way power driver's seat. The passenger seat is only a four way power. So I wish that Honda would have given us an eight way as well on the passenger side. These seats are heated, three stage heated. 
If you want ventilated seats, you have to go for the Elite trim. Even the Touring grade doesn't come with ventilated seats, so I wish Honda would expand the availability of ventilated seats. You can get that on so many other competitors. Window controls feel pretty high quality as well. These are actually new window switches versus other Honda products that I've tested, uh, and it's one touch up down for all four windows, which is definitely nice, along with that power window control or, or power folding mirror control. You have more storage down here with cup holders and two tiers of storage, which is nice. But overall, the interior does make a nice first impression. And then when you get in, you can see it's got that nice high step in height, but it's not too high. You don't necessarily need running boards, even for somebody short like myself, I'm five foot seven. Now getting in and shutting the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Uh, and then you can hear there's that newer Honda chime or Honda welcome sound. Push the button here to fire up the engine. It's got that silky smooth V6, which is nice, especially if you guys don't wanna have uh, or deal with a turbocharged four cylinder. Now, uh, looking at the rest of this interior, you can see the steering wheel basically comes off of the new Civic. It's a three spoke design with the same contrasting orange stitching. It's got paddles on the wheel to control the 10 speed auto. You have your usual buttons here with the Honda sensing system. You can also adjust the half left side of the screen. This is the seven inch digital cluster, which you can see the right side has an analog speedometer. Only the Elite gives you the full digital 10.3 inch display. Again, something that Honda includes as standard on the Accord, it should be uh, on the Pilot as well, considering the price point. You have a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel, uh, which offers a good amount of adjustability. Uh, you have a heated steering wheel on this trim, which is nice. The horn sounds good. It doesn't sound puny. Uh, it sounds appropriate given the size of the vehicle. And then you can see here a lot of the uh, controls, they feel pretty high quality, typical Honda. And then looking at the rest of the dash, you can see soft touch injection molded plastic on the upper portion, no heads up display. You have to go for the elite trim and you also only get the nine speaker premium Honda sound system. There is a 12 speaker Bose stereo, but only on the touring and the elite trim. So not on the trail sport trim. You can see there's some nice leather real stitching on this lower portion of the dash with contrasting stitching. I like the built-in shelf here that provides additional storage. You can see the dash vents look pretty traditional, although it's a different design versus the metallic look uh, where it's continuous metal vent on some other Hondas. Uh, down here, you can see you have three zone automatic climate control. You have three level heated seats. Again, there's a button where a cooled seat could go, but not on the trail sport trim. You have two USB charging ports. You have uh, your phone charging, wireless phone charging over here with some good storage. This is also a nice non-slip surface here to keep your phone from sliding around. And then this right here, this is the nine inch infotainment system that you get as standard on the EXL and up trims. Go for a lower trim and you'll deal with a seven inch display. You can see it has a physical volume knob, which is nice, some actual physical buttons but this screen here is just looking very small for this car. I mean, this is perfectly acceptable in a Civic or an Integra, uh, but there's a 12.3 inch display, as you guys know, in the new Accord, which should be included in this vehicle. It also has the older Honda software, which is fine. It's relatively quick and snappy. It includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Although for some reason, my phone is not connecting to it automatically. It usually did, but of course, as I start to film this, there we go. I have to uh, manually push it to connect, which you can see there's the CarPlay. It looks nice. I like how it takes up most of, it goes, it pushes itself out to the outer quarters of the screen. But again, this is a missed opportunity for Honda. So I'm very disappointed to see that. There's no embedded GPS in this car. You have to go for the touring trim. There is the cabin talk feature where you can amplify your voice to the rear and third row of the vehicle that basically allows you to t talk to people back there without having to scream. Um, but overall, the system definitely uh, is usable. It's just looking very small. Now, when I put the vehicle to reverse, you can see the Trail Sport includes a full 360 camera with a top-down view. It also has multiple different views. It has rear cross-traffic alert with automatic braking, with trajectory and front and rear parking sensors. This is only on the Trail Sport and the Elite trim, so it's nice that at least Honda gives, gives you a full 360 camera. Uh, you can't even get that on the Accord or the CRV, so kind of keep that in mind. Uh, down here, you can see this is the push button transmission selector for the 10 speed auto. It does have your usual park, reverse, neutral drive, and then a sport mode here. And then your drive mode toggle is here where you can cycle between, it looks like seven modes, sport, normal, eco, snow, trail, sand, and tow. So lots of modes. The sand and the, sn and the uh, trail mode are new if you guys go for all wheel drive. That's what includes that. Uh, but we'll talk about the different drive modes later on in the driving scene. You can see a big center console area here with two cup holders, padded center console with a large amount of storage. You can see all of my camera equipment fits in there pretty nicely. The seats are comfortable and supportive. And even though this is a faux leather, it feels almost like real leather. The heated seat works well. 
uh, but again, only comes with a dark color. It could use more lateral support in the corners, but it is a very comfortable seat for road trips. Uh, open up the glove box there. You can see it's a bin style. It's stamped, but not lined with felt. The auto dimming rear view mirror is a nice touch, but it doesn't offer a digital camera rear view mirror. You have LED map lighting uh, in the upper uh, areas here. Then you can see big panoramic glass roof, which also gives you a power retractable shade, and you can also open and close the roof. You can tilt the roof as well, so that's included as standard. It's nice to see Honda finally throw that in, uh, and I love how it's one continuous glass piece. But overall, the front seat area definitely has the interior space and most of the tech that you're going to want, but again, I kind of wish Honda would expand the availability of the Bose stereo into this trim along with the heated and ventilated seats. The heads-up display I could save for the Elite trim, but I think for those of you who want this off-road off-roady trim with all the luxury touches, I wish Honda would offer something to appeal to consumers who want all those. Looking at the second row, you can see the Trail Sport model does come standard with the second row captain's chairs. If you guys go for the other trims, uh, they will come with an eight passenger configuration with a bench seat in the center here that actually comes out and goes under underneath the floor, expanding the seating capacity to eight, even on the Elite trims. Honda says this is the only vehicle in the class that offers eight passenger seating with a panoramic roof. So if you want that, the Pilot is definitely going to be on your short list. Now, in terms of the materials back here, you can see hard touch injection molded plastic, nice and padded over here. Here, uh, aluminum accented door handle, more piano black. The Trail Sport does include these manual rear window shades, which is nice. And then you get around 40.8 inches of legroom back here, which is nice. Not the best in the segment, but it is pretty much up there among the most spacious second rows. You can see as I get in and shut the door. Uh, the, th the second row area here definitely provides a ton of space. Now, this is with the seat all the way back. You can see it's somebody at five foot seven. I can easily get back here and cross my legs. There's a ton of underfloor storage. There's a completely flat floor here in the center. And then you also have rear seat air vents along with your own set of climate control. You have two USB charging ports. You have an actual 110 power outlet, but no heated rear seats. You have to again go for the Elite trim. And if you're looking for ventilated second row seats, which you can get on some competitors, the Pilot does not offer that at any price uh, for the moment. You can see there's some storage cubbies or storage pockets in the seat back. This is probably for your smartphone right here, which is nice. Uh, there's a pass through over here that allows you to get into the third row. And then these captain's chairs, they recline, they fold down, they have an adjustable armrest. Uh, so this is all very nice. I also like how the panoramic glass roof comes over to the second row, but this portion here doesn't open only that area over the front seats. But let me go ahead and hop into the third row because the third row area has always been a relatively strong suit with the pilot. Now to get into the third row, there's a button down here at the bottom or at the lower end, which is good for kids because if it's all the way up here, which there is a button up here, um, kids most likely won't be able to reach that. So just push that. You can see the seat will kind of automatically push itself forward. But as I get back here, you can see this third row does seat three people across, which some competitors don't allow you to do that. And let me go ahead and slide over here into this area. Now, Honda says there's 32.5 inches of legroom back here. Now, 32.5 is not a lot. This is with the seat all the way back. You can see it does have a pretty good amount of um, room to get into the third row. Uh, but once I'm back here at five foot seven, with the seat all the way back, my knees aren't touching this second row seat, which is nice. Uh, so you could ask this passenger to move forward a smidge and give you more space for taller folks. But I could sit back here on a shorter one hour ish trip. For example, you can see the headroom space is actually pretty good. But keep in mind, I'm only five foot seven. Uh, in terms of features, Honda did include a a USB charging port, you have air vents, you have cup holders. This is not padded, it's all hard touch plastic, but at least this uh, window allows you to kind of get a little view outside. You can see it's also on the other side as well. These seats do recline a little bit, but it's not power. Um, and then you have cup holders on the other side. If you wanted to fit three across, you can see sitting in the middle here, you could probably fit three skinny people because there's not, again, much space on each side. But overall, the third row is definitely usable for full-size adults, and the Pilot remains one of the better options in the segment if you guys actually need to put adults in the third row. So the Honda Pilot has always been a very popular choice in the three-row family SUV segment. And while the prior generation was never really loved by enthusiasts, uh, it was a really great seller for Honda. So now that we're finally behind the wheel of the th uh, fourth generation, the redesigned version, it's been about four months since I had a chance to drive this vehicle. When I first drove it out in Arizona, I was relatively impressed with the overall package with a couple of misses that Honda also did with the interior, specifically the tech. Now, 
This model here has a new V6, even though it doesn't seem all that new on paper. It has five more horsepower versus the prior generation. It's a new block, it's a new head. Uh, it's technically a, still a J series, but it lacks VTEC. But uh, we've got a new 10 speed automatic transmission. I have the vehicle in sport mode. I'll put the transmission in sport mode. When I last tested this car out at elevation, it did zero to 60 in like 7.9 seconds. I suspect that this, this time, I suspect it will be much quicker, but let's go ahead and see what we can get. Honda doesn't quote a zero to 60 number, but let's go ahead and see. In our testing here, we'll brake torque it. Zero to 60 in 7.02 seconds. So right at around seven seconds, that's about a second faster almost versus when I first tested this vehicle. Uh, and this is on a pretty level surface. This is where I primarily do a lot of my testing. I will say that the old Pilot uh, was quicker. That old J-Series V6 with the nine-speed auto could sprint off zero to 60 in the uh, lower six second range or below six and a half seconds. So I'm not entirely sure what happened. This new model is, I wanna say a smidge heavier at around 4,600 or 4,700 pounds. But the engine itself is nice because if you guys want a V6, this is still one of the few out there that has it. Remember Toyota just dumped the V6 in the Highlander for a turbo four. Um, but, you know, there are still quicker options, obviously, but speed is not necessarily the point of this. But let's go ahead and try it here. I'm just, I'm not gonna brake torque it this time. We're just gonna floor it. Really smooth shifts, really smooth engine also. It makes a nice sound. 7.69 seconds. This is with a more uphill uh, surface that we were driving on. So I think the top performance of this vehicle is certainly acceptable. Uh, is it, you know, going to labor a little bit if you have it with a full load? Perhaps. Uh, what really a V6 lacks compared to those turbo fours is the low range torque. Uh, you have to rev this engine out, which for some of you may, you may prefer that, but that noisy V6 could wake up your kids if you're trying to pass that slow mo moving vehicle in the left lane. Um, when you're out on the highway, but overall the trail sport model, I'm going to switch this drive mode here back to uh, or the transmission back to drive. This is the model that is the more off-road oriented version. Now I've already had a chance to drive this vehicle off-road. Uh, so I'm gonna primarily talk about what it's like to drive this vehicle out on the road because that's where most people are gonna drive it. I'll switch the drive mode back to normal because the transmission in sport does hold gears and it, it tends to make the experience a little bit noisier as well. You are also going to hear the tire noise a little bit more in this model because of the 18 inch all-terrain tires. There's a little bit more road noise. Uh, but other than that, the new Pilot is quieter than the prior generation, but get the Elite if you guys want the quietest version of the Pilot. As you go around some corners here, the steering got very light for this generation, so it no longer feels like it's a sportier driving vehicle, which is fine. It's still comfortable, it's still competent, it, it still, you know, gives you control and you don't feel like you're you know piloting a big boat although you def you definitely feel the soft suspension tuning and the width of this car uh, it still feels a little bit like more like a minivan when you're driving it at least the new version doesn't look like a minivan and that's kind of the whole reason why i like this new model a lot more put your foot down here the <laughs> torque vectoring all-wheel drive does have the ability to send up to 70 percent up to the rear wheels man that is a loud engine uh, and it also will do up to 100 percent side to side which again that true torque vectoring is what allows this vehicle to have one of the best all-wheel drive systems in the business where it can almost function like a limited slip diff because of the ability for the computer to send power to each individual wheel to get you unstuck in certain conditions. But overall, it's a nice driving vehicle. The ride quality is comfortable and soft. The seats are also pretty soft, although I wish it had a little more lateral support. Visibility out of the new Pilot is good. Honda's typically very good at that. You can see out of the fronts, the side, the rear very well. Although this model, uh, I don't actually, I don't think the Pilot in general offers a digital camera rear view mirror, which would be nice considering, you know, when you have this vehicle loaded up with seven, eight people, you're not gonna be able to see out of the rear, especially if you have uh, really tall friends, their heads are gonna be blocking uh, your view out of the rear view mirror. Uh, but other than that, um, as a daily driver, this is gonna be an excellent road trip vehicle because of how spacious it is, because of how quiet it is. It just has a ton of room inside, which is definitely nice if you plan to carry regularly four or five people. <laughs> I have to say, there is something about driving this car that kind of makes me feel like I'm in high school again because of the noises it makes, because of how smooth and quickly the transmission shifts. 
Uh, and overall, it's just a pleasant refresh or redesign of the previous generation. Uh, Honda didn't make it any sportier, but they made it more capable, they made it more comfortable, they made the technology a lot better, although that screen right there is a huge disappointment considering I just had the new Accord that has the 12.3 inch display, which would fit perfectly in this dashboard. Uh, and I also don't have the all digital display uh, that you only get on the Elite trim. If you want ventilated seats and heated second row seats, you have to again go for the Elite trim. This model here does have heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is nice. At least you also do get the 360 camera. And in terms of the driver assistance tech, Honda does do one of the better systems. The lane keep assist keeps you centered in the lane very nicely. The adaptive cruise control works fairly well. It's pretty much on par with the latest systems from Toyota and Hyundai and Kia. And in terms of fuel economy, in my week's worth of testing, I've been averaging around 19 and a half miles to the gallon on regular gas. 19 and a half is a mixture of city and highway. On the highway, this did about 24 MPG, so a little bit better versus the EPA ratings. I suspect for those of you who don't have this trim with the all-terrain tires, which do uh, create more drag, uh, so more, ro more rolling resistance, that's gonna get slightly worse fuel economy. So the, remember, the other trims will get slightly better fuel efficiency. But again, there is a missed opportunity for Honda because there's no hybrid option like you can get on the Highlander, for example. The Highlander is still going to be the fuel efficiency champ. Uh, but, you know, for those of you who want more of a traditional crossover, traditional family crossover with a ton of space, a reputation for re reliability, and as well off-road capability, because this is the model you're going to want to get, it does have actually some true off-road capability. The new Pilot certainly does very well in that regard. But it only gets me wondering, you know, what is Honda going to do when they refresh the car? Because I imagine the first refresh they're going to give it, and it should be fairly soon, hopefully, is going to be an infotainment system upgrade because this screen here is just kind of a disappointment, especially when you consider the rest of the class. So after spending a full week with the all new fourth generation Honda Pilot, I have to say Honda made some nice changes for this all new fourth generation, specifically in the exterior styling. I also like that the Trail Sport model also has some decent off-road cap capability without uh, ruining the on-road dynamics. The interior, it is spacious, it is comfortable. It has a ton of room for up to seven, eight people, even on certain trims. What really leaves me disappointed about the Pilot, the new generation is the fact that Honda didn't decide to give us a hybrid version and the tech in this vehicle. While the nine inch infotainment system is perfectly acceptable, I like how it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is not the newest system that we get in the Accord that has an Android based operating system that has Google built in. And also with most competitors going to at least a 10, 12 inch display, that nine inch display on this fully loaded version is definitely looking a little bit lackluster. And it really surprises me that Honda didn't want to just put the Accord system in here. I know the Accord, the development time between the Pilot and the Accord uh, the pilot was first. I think it should have been a quick change that the company would have done. So I suspect that whenever Honda decides to do a 2024 or 2025 model, they will be upgrading the infotainment system because it's just necessary. Everybody is going to larger screens, especially when you have your flagship SUV, that might be a problem and it could be a deal breaker for some of you. Now, in terms of performance, the V6 does zero to 60 in around seven seconds, which is perfectly acceptable. It is slower than the prior generation, but that's not the point of a vehicle like this. The handling is perfectly fine. It's no longer the sportiest option in the segment, but uh, for those of you who want one of the most refined vehicle and the most spacious, this is definitely going to fall right into that list. And in terms of pricing, these vehicles are obviously already on sale. And the base Pilot LX version with two wheel drive starts at just under $36,000. Now that's before destination, which I believe is like 1400 bucks. If you guys want all wheel drive, it's gonna cost you additional $2,000. Now, most of you are probably going to step it up to at least the EXL because the sport trim is one notch above the LX, but you are gonna still deal with a small, super small seven inch display without wireless CarPlay. So I would say skip the sport trim and at least go for the EXL. That's gonna be around $40,000, $42,000 to be exact. The Trail Sport model here is an interesting version because technically its price is right around the same as the Touring grade, but it does include a couple of unique things. First of all, this comes standard with four wheel drive or all wheel drive but it also lacks the Bose stereo, the embedded GPS uh, that the Touring model gives you, which some of you may prefer, but you get the upgraded suspension, the upgraded tires, a unique look on the outside, and the full 360 camera, which you can't get on the Touring grade. This Trail Sport starts at around 48,350. A Touring with all-wheel drive starts at around 48,550. If you guys want everything, the Elite version is gonna go for around 53 grand, including a destination. This model here with the color upcharge and the destination charge, you're looking at an ass-tested price of just over 50. 
$50,000, which I know 50 grand is definitely steep, but it is right around the average new car transaction price. But also keep in mind, if you guys are looking for heated and ventilated seats, heated rear seats and a heads-up display and a Bose stereo system, you cannot get it with the Trail Sport trim. You have to step it up to the Touring or the Elite trim. Really, the Elite's gonna give you everything. I kind of wish Honda would offer a Trail Sport Elite that kind of gives you the off-road capability with all those extra features, but that would push the price even further to probably $55,000, but that would compare it very favorably with the Telluride X-Pro, which I believe this car is, I believe is going to be this car's main rival. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.